Okay, so this is the first of a series of tutorial that will teach you uh, what the open head and server can do and also how to configure it. So in this uh, tutorial we'll see the basic configuration of the open head and server and the uh, configuration of a DMAX function that can tune a DVB tuner and output streams to a network. So to start, well First launch your favorite browser, here it is Chrome. Type the IP address or domain name or whatever of your um, open head and server. It is better to use HTTPS, so if it's not by default you can click here and it's on. And uh, enter the open head and password. By default this is open head and capital O capital H as written here. We will be asked to change it. Uh, we can do it now or later. Uh, this is done in the system tab. System tab contains the basic configuration for the server. Uh, there are basic commands to view the logs, to uh, back up the configuration to the dongle, to restart, reboot, shutdown, and also one very interesting thing is to upload files. Uh, up files are um, new firmware packages, firmware updates, uh, and also license files. If when you buy a new function, you get a file that you just upload there and it immediately activates the function. The system settings allow you to change the basic settings of the system. So for instance, the name and the password. So there are two passwords. One is read-only that you can provide, for instance, to people who are in charge of operating the server, and one is read-write that uh, you would use to configure the machine. You can also configure the trap targets, uh, SNMP trap targets, so that you get an alarm when there's something goes wrong on the machine or you can get the alarms via email over there. Of course, uh, the server can show you what kind of hardware you have, disk processors and so on. And there is also the possibility to export the configuration to an XML file via this button here, or import an, an existing XML file coming from this server or another server, and we try to cleverly import it. Um, the Cloud tab also allows you to do the same thing, but over the network. So if your browser here is, connect is also connected to the Internet, it can upload the configuration to the open head and servers, so it is kept there uh, at all time. You can also import an, uh, an existing configuration from another server or the same server, or just, just in the past. Okay, so now the next tabs are for the configurations of the functions, uh, what the open head and server provides. So the first tab here is links. Uh, links are, can be seen as a physical input and output of the machine. So you have first the um, network links, that is the Ethernet port or wireless LAN and so on, the interfaces. Um, then you have the DVB links that is the satellite, the DTT tuner, and so on, and the storage link, the disks. Um, let's focus first on the network links. For instance, Ethernet 0 is configured by default via DHCP. If you want to change that, just click Change. You change to, for instance, Static, put an IP address, Netmask, and so on, Apply. If you want, uh, a, a cool feature would be to if you want to um, create a VLAN on this interface, it's like Linux always did. Uh, you just enter a new interface with the name ETH0.110, for instance, and you configure the interface as you would on a standard Linux system, and the interface is automatically mounted. So what will also interest us today is the DVB links. In this machine I have a single PCI Express card that has two uh, adapters, two tuners. Um, one is a DVB-T tuner and the other one is capable of doing DVB-C and DVB-T as you can see on, on this table. 
so we can actually have two uh, multiplexes at the same time. Uh, to configure the multiplexes, um, you have the node tab. So what is a node in Open Identity terminology? It is an is an instance of a transport stream. Uh, the instance can be either a file, like the two ones provided here, by default with all open head and installation. Uh, the, they can be also multicast address, that's what we call a net node. Uh, they can be also a transponder on the satellite, or on the DTT, and so on, a directory on the, drive, on the hard drive, and so on. So in our case here, we would need to create a DVB node. All nodes have a name, so we can write whatever we want, so for instance DTT1. Uh, nodes must be also attached to a link, so let's attach it to the first tuner. And then either I configure um, the parameters like frequency and so on manually, or I just click apply and manage content. Via the manage content button that you have on all nodes, you have access to extra features. For instance, uh, DTT scan. So here when I click start scanning, it will try to tune on all um, DVB-T uh, channels uh, to see if there are channels available there. There is also another button on the left, uh, Auto Detect Network, that can do several things. If you're on the satellite, it will try to tune to a list of known transponders, find a network ID, and from the network ID deduce on which satellite uh, your dish is pointed to. Um, and then you can use a list of known transponders from for, for this satellite. Uh, another possibility for DVB-T, um, there are countries where the, the UHF canals have an offset, so that will auto-detect uh, which offset is used in your country. When you're done scanning uh, your DTT uh, canals, you can click on export, that will write an XML file to your, um, to your browser that you can import later via this button. For instance, if you have five DTT tuners to configure and they're hooked up to exactly the same uh, antenna, you just do the scan on one and then you can import the file to the other um, DVB nodes. So uh, where, I'm, where I'm located, um, we only have uh, up to Canal 35, and as you can see, well, that's a French television, we're in Paris uh, currently. And so if I click on um, a canal that has been found, you can have a look at all the um, PSI and SI information, like the SDT, and whatever descriptor is inside. So that can be quite convenient uh, already to understand how does the DTT system work. If I have dozens of multiplexes, that's not the case here, but I can also um, type a name here and it will highlight automatically all, only the channels that contains, the terms of the multiplexes that contain channels that have uh, this string in, in the name. For instance, I want NJ12. So here it is in green. And if I want to configure my node for this multiplex specifically, I just click on Configure for UHF Canal 32. And if I close this window, I can see that the parameters here, frequency, has been changed for the correct um, frequency. Um, we've only just configured a DVB node. That's all we've done, and nothing is currently running on the server. To have something running on the server, we must also create a function that will work with this node as an input. So the function we will use is a dmux function. The dmux function has one input, that's the dvb node that we've just created. You can also specify an output. Uh, in this case, it will forward the entire transponder, the entire multiplex, 24 megabits per second in dvbt, to a multicast address. If you don't want that, you can leave it to blank. Click on Apply. And then we've given the server the order to tune the first adapter to the frequency we've given. So if I have a look at the log, 
I can see that it just started and uh, I got the PMT and SDT and so on for, for the programs I have here. So if I have a look at the workflow, we can see that we already have a little bit of a workflow, a Dmux function that's using the DVB node we've created as an input. So nodes can really be inputs and or outputs, uh, and they can be output of a function and input of another one. Um, so now we'll put outputs um, to the Dmux function we've created. So let's say we want to output this NLJ12 uh, channel to, to a multicast address. So first I create a multicast address, that's what we call a net node. I will give it a name, an edge 12 DTT, for instance. I must bind it to a network link as well. So let's output it to the first Ethernet that I've got on this machine. A multicast address. Uh, a port, if you're not happy with 5004. You can even change the source address and the source port uh, if it is required. By default, it uses the source address of the ETH0 interface, in our case. So now I've created my multiple, my multicast address. Nothing is currently running on this multicast address until I attach it to my demux function by creating a demux operation. So I create my output to the net node I've just created. I select one particular service ID, that would be 1538. If I want, I can filter on some PIDs. For instance, let's say I only want the video and the French audio. If I uh, leave the, the field blank, all PIDs are forwarded. Uh, otherwise, only the PIDs that are specified there are forwarded to the multicast address. And then I click on Apply Row. So now we have something running on this net node. So you can either start your favorite um, multimedia player like VLC, bind to this multicast address and see what's happening. Or you can also click the Manage Content button. Manage Content button allows you by clicking on Play to actually view the channel. So we can see that we indeed have energy 12 on running on this channel, on this multicast address. Um, what's interesting to see with the manage content feature is that um, it's actually using a, an HTTP tunnel to get data. So, so even if you don't have direct access on your browser to the multicast address, the server will forward it to you via HTTP. Um, for this feature to work, you need to have the VLC plugin installed on your machine. Okay, so now let's have a look at the workflow. We see that we have the first uh, DVB node running through the demux function and outputting one channel. Let's see that I want to output another channel to another multicast address. So I create a second net node. Let's say that I want to get the TF1 channel. Again, I will output it to Ethernet 0 with a different multicast address and I apply. So now you know, I create a new Dmux operation to the output node I've just created. I select the service ID for TF1. Let's leave the feed blank so I can have all the, um, the uh, PIDs of the channel and I click apply. So now let's have a look at our workflow. Our workflow has two channels here for coming from one Dimex function, coming from one DVB transponder.